Now let's draw the anterolateral system pathway. Indicate that its first order neuron lies within the dorsal root ganglion, its second order neuron lies within the dorsal horn of the spinal cord, and its third order neuron lies within the contralateral thalamus in the ventroposterior lateral nucleus. Now show that the anterolateral system projects centrally from the dorsal root ganglion into the dorsal horn. Then label Lissauer's tract in between the dorsal peel surface and the dorsal horns because the anterolateral system fibers ascend or descend a variable number of spinal levels within Lissauer's tract prior to synapsing in the dorsal horn. Now show that at or near their level of entry into the spinal cord, the anterolateral system fibers decussate via the ventral commissure and bundle in the anterolateral spinal cord where they ascend the spinal cord and brainstem to synapse in the thalamus. Finally, show that the thalamus projects to the sensory cortex. Note that whereas the posterior column pathway ascends the spinal cord ipsilateral to its site of origin, the anterolateral system ascends the spinal cord contralateral to its site of origin, which is why we originally labeled the posterior column pathway on the right and the anterolateral system on the left. Lastly, let's draw the cell bodies and pathway for the lateral corticospinal tract. Indicate that the first order neuron lies in the motor cortex, most notably, but also in the premotor and sensory cortices, and then that the second order neuron lies within the contralateral anterior gray matter horn of the spinal cord. Now show that the lateral corticospinal tract fibers descend from the motor cortex through the ipsilateral brainstem, decussate within the medullary pyramids at the cervical medullary junction, and then descend through the spinal cord in the lateral corticospinal tract to synapse in spinal motor neurons, which project motor fibers via the anterior nerve root to form the motor division of the peripheral nerve. This concludes our diagram.